Hello everybody. In this class, we will study about other two products, which are again very very important products from nutrition and health improvement point of view. And those are Nutridal and Fortified Noodles. First, Nutridal. You know the pulses. They constitute one of the most important food crop or food categories that have been extensively used as staple food to cover basic protein and energy needs. India is the world largest producer of pulses but at the same time also it is world largest importer. Over the last 50 years, if you see the production data which is provided in this, it has almost uh, remains stagnant that is the, but the population is increasing. So, this has resulted that per capita decrease regular the, of the or per capita availability of the pulses has decreased and that is the reason why the government has to import these pulses. So, there is a continuous need to find out that some substitute of these regular pulses to provide protein supply. I will so into this respect that Nutridal has we have worked out. So in this slide, I have just tried to give you from the literature that a normal nutritional composition of the major pulses which are grown in the country that is Bengal oil gram, black gram, green gram, etc. That is they have protein ranging from even 7.2 percent in P as well as, as high as 40, 43 percent in soybean, etc. So, they have uh, wide ranging amount of the protein. Similarly, they also have in uh, some like Bengal gram around 5 percent fat it has, soybean has as high as 20 percent or 19.5 percent fat, groundnut that is a it has around that 40 percent fat. Also, they have significant amount of carbohydrate ranging from around 15 to 16 percent to 60 percent or 65 percent like that. Okay. Also, in addition to this uh, protein, fat and carbohydrate contents that is which that is the particularly fat and carbohydrate, they result into the significant energy contribution. So, they also become a good source of energy. So, apart from that energy and protein providing uh, nutrients, these uh, pulses, they also have contain the crude fiber, calcium, iron and other minerals etc. So, this uh, as far as the pulses are concerned that uh, these proteins, they are uh, made up of the various amino acid and in this amino acid, there are certain uh, amino acid which are essential to human beings. Like these essential amino acids, eight amino acids like lysine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, phenylalanine, the threonine, tryptophan and valine, they are not synthesized by the mammalian bodies and are therefore, they are directly essentials and they are indispensable in, because these are required for various functions in the body for body growth etcetera. So, these amino acid must have to be provided to the body through dietary sources and they are called essential amino acids. Similarly, the histidine and arginine are two semi essential amino acids that is, they can be synthesized in the adult body but they cannot be synthesized in the child or infant's body. So, for them these uh, include that is the semi essential amino acids. So, this uh, table gives the essential amino acids or semi essential amino acid content of the important pulses like Bengal gram, by gram. I will not read from this table, but you can see it gives that is yes, the but the important uh, point which uh, is there that is not all pulses contain all essential amino acids in required proportion, in adequate proportion. 
and that's why it is one of the common practice recommended that the pulses because in the people those particularly who are vegetarian people these pulses provide a major source of protein and energy so for the protein for having the balance of amino acid it is commonly recommended by dietitians or nutritionists that the vegetarian people should consume mixed pulses instead of consuming one single pulse so as to balance the essential amino acids so the pulses although they can be consumed in different uh, products in different form like uh, you can see in this slide that is the pulses when they are harvested from the field then after cleaning dehusking and sorting grading etc they are conditioned and this conditioning and tempering and then this conditioned and tempered pulses are dehusked that is outer layer husk is removed and in the process the removal of this husk these the pulses are broken into two dolls to cartilages so depending upon the conditioning how much the moisture content sometimes during the dehusking operations some of the pulses they get broken right so the on an average again here in this case also about 10 to 15% broken are produced so the for the the means that is after dehusking the splits which is obtained that is consumed as a whole it splits it is polished to give surface finish and this is used as a dal so these are the products so the broken which are obtained here they can be even sent to the fractionation unit or different uh, fractions that is the high starch granulosis functions or medium uh, protein functions are depending upon the size etc they can be are alternatively uh, in other case these broken are sent to the milling units where the basins are pulse floors etc are obtained but these uh, uh, dolls they are mainly used so that is the dehusk pulses is it the cause split or cartilages are dal okay so as i showed you in the slide or diagram process flow chart that it result into a sizable amounts of brokens and these broken pulses also do not find some good market they do not fetch good price all right in the market so in the millers they have to ultimately uh, sell it at a lower inferior prices or convert it into product or send it to the product manufacturing right so that is one aspect the other aspect as i told you that these plant proteins and particularly these pulses that dal which constitute or which provide a major source of energy and protein for the body but the all the essential amino acids needed by the body they are not present in uh, this uh, pulse or single pulse right so the like for example sulfur containing amino acids are uh, distinctly lower in legumes threonine is lower in cereals compared with the uh, amounts in proteins of animal origin so they are uh, depending upon this uh, they are I mean, essential amino acid content they are normally either incomplete or partially uh, complete proteins but it is only egg protein is a complete protein which has the essential amino acid content uh, in all the essential amino acids present in it in required proportion or in sufficient quantity in adequate so in this table the different sources there is legume sources different cereal sources are done, and their protein content and their lla score and lysine scores etc are provided so including the essential amino acid content okay so in order to uh, meet the requirement of the uh, pulses or protein dietary requirements as in the first introductory slide i show you showed you that the pulses their per capita availability is decreasing although the production is more so government is forced to import pulses import pulses so to overcome this problem 
situation, there are certain strategies are to adopted like in this case that is the legume analog develop that is uh, prepare dal like material dal like materials like the lentil analog or bean analog. So, a lentil analog here wheat and soybean wheat flour and soybean flours are extruded into a products given they are given the shape of a dal that is it is similar uh, to the lentils in terms of nutritional and sensory properties and it is able to be prepared within a short period of time. But of course, it although various uh, manufacturers and such as they claim that, but I have sure that whether it is a uh, where this material they are given the shape of the dal, but the material it is not exactly the pulse is not. So, the it is amino acid content etcetera is uh, whether all the amino acids are balanced. Although soybean and wheat they are essential amino acids are complementary to each other, but there are again some problems. The other product is the bean analog. It is a newly developed navy bean like product made from extrusion of combined ingredients like sorghum, soybean, wheat which are excellent sources of proteins and these soya based analogs does not render the taste of dals and other pulses, but they may provide the uh, amino acids etcetera. The uh, very few literature is available on the formulation of dal by the use of combination of pulses to imitate the texture and flavor of the cooked dal. That is, it is important that is whatever this whether bean analog or even dal analog, they the raw ingredient materials use them for making them for giving the shape of the dal either soya bean or sorghum or wheat or such other material. But it will be more appropriate that if the pulses itself they are used to give and in this regard the utilization of that broken of the pulses we at IIT Kharagpur have developed a process technology for making nutridal we call it nutridal because it is we, where we use combination of pulses I will show you little later in one of the slides where different combinations of pulses are used in appropriate requirements and its amino acid content is balanced. So, in one single dal in one uh, product all the essential amino acids and it is purely from the protein or uh, vegetable source. Uh, that is what is the nutri dal concept. You can see here in the picture these dals are those uh, obtained from that uh, these are the balance they have the balance of essential amino acid. So, nutri dal is a essential amino acid balanced dal which resembles the natural dal in physical and sensory characteristics. It has improved nutrient delivery, reduced anti nutrients and requires comparatively less time to cook because and it has all the ingredient only the pulses are used for its preparation. It is a value added product made by utilizing the broken dal. So, again that is it uh, a value addition and also it uh, provides avenues or economical benefits to the dal millers as well as to the farmers. Okay the broken dal is a by product a valuable by product of dal milling industry. So, this engineered dal will be prepared by the heart extrusion technology. We use like in the earlier lecture we studied iron fortified rice. In fact, the same facility is utilized or can be utilized for making this product just by simple changing the dye. In that case, we were having a dye which gives a rice saved material and in this case we have a dye which gives a dal saved material. So, dye design is changed and of course, since the materials are ingredients are changed in that case it was a rice flour here it is pulses flour mixture of different pulses. So, the process parameter is that is conditions of the extrusion etcetera are also changed. So, we have optimized those things ok. So, I will just come to give you a little bit more input about the formulation of nutridal or preparation of nutridal. So, first thing is that balance that is have a proper that is there, there are 4 5 pulses. So, 
obviously either from the literature or we have collected different pulses identified the pulses which have a good sources of all those essential amino acids and that uh, to formulate that a blend that is the formulation of the blend includes deciding the quantity of the individual pulses in which they should be mixed so that the final blend we get it has a uh, complete uh, blend or balance of all essential amino acids. So, in this case we use egg protein as a reference protein. Our aim is to have a blend of different pulses or different pulse floors which has essential amino acid similar to that of the egg protein. Okay. So, this is the in fact the essence estimated average requirement of amino acid based on WHO, FAO and ICMR uh, recommendations that is the for infant, for children, for school boys, for adults, the, these different essential amino acids accordingly. So, even this uh, their requirement. So, this process technology, this technology which we have developed, it gives that uh, that uh, chance or you it is flexible enough one can prepare pulses having the essential amino acid requirement for the infants, we can if the product can be developed having the essential uh, amino acid requ uh, requirement fulfilling the essential amino acid requirement of the children, school boys etcetera. So, this provide this technology provides the flexibility to prepare the nutridal of specifies or designated uh, nutritional value. So, the raw material for this product is the uh, dal blend that is. So, and might be that depending upon the requirement which is a, it may have said that some other protein source might be required to be supplemented like soya protein isolate or such other plant protein isolate to in order to balance the all the essential amino acids. Then of course, starch sources are to be used because this uh, we take the dal source. So, some starch source for providing binding etcetera. So, then optimization of the formulation for the formulation is prepared using linear programming method. So, we have developed two, two dal formulation one is the chickpea based another is a lentil based formulation and then these formulations are uh, as I told you they are balanced with those of the essential uh, amino acid present in the uh, egg protein. So, this uh, table gives the different essential amino acid content of different pulses. This is the content uh, of uh, pulses used in formulation of the nutridal and its comparison with the essential amino acid is uh, this. Alright, so egg protein that is it has essential amino acid accordingly the pulses which we have used we it is analyzed and data is generated milligram per gram of the pulse floor and this data is used in the linear programming. So, in the linear programming actually there are certain constraints and then some objective function or decision function. So, the constant is that is you give the upper limit and lower limit etcetera that is there are whatever ram the different pulses are there. So, we there we give that yes this pulse contains x y z value of the uh, essential amino acids and it has uh, a b c cast etcetera. So, these uh, essential amino acids and uh, this cast uh, so, we want to minimize the cast we want to maximize or we want to get the desired amount of this uh, essential amino acid particular essential amino acid in the final blend accordingly that uh, and we give that as in 100 gram that is a equation linear program x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3 plus up to x n is equal to 100. So, also that is x 1 x 2 x 3 x n should not be or equal to 0 or x 1, x 2, x 3 and we be the commodities like essential it should be equal to or less than or it can be given. A, so, one has we in this linear programming we give our requirement that is what is the. So, the solvers in the linear program the solver might have another comes it solves the problem and gives s yes, x kg of the uh, uh, one uh, R 1 component, Y kg of R 2 component, 
ZKG of R3 component, etc., if it is taken, it gives the desired components. So, this solve these are some of the equations which are solved by this linear programming and finally, formulation is decided. And then this formulation is now here in this figure. You can see you are taking that is these different dals are the, the taken broken dal are taken in proper proportion all right. And then uh, these dal floors they are blended in proper proportion and conditioned like like similar manner like that in the case of iron fortified rice preparation their rice floor was being blended with micronutrient here different pulse floors different dal floors are being blended in required and then it is passed through the extruder we have the nutri dal dye dye we have designed the dye dal and then it gives the finally the product this is the dal obtained from the pictures of the photographs of the nutridal which is obtained from uh, uh, the extruder and after cooking it looks like. So, you can see that in this process we prepare nutridal and these are the essential amino acid like histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine etcetera that is in the two formulations chickpea based formulation and lentin based formulations that is the uh, the essential amino acids, these essential amino acids, what is there as per the formulation, they contain these amount of uh, essential nutrient acids. So, nutridal it resembles the natural dal in its physical and sensory characteristics, it delivers adequate quantity of all essential amino acids in one single product that is dal and cooking characteristics of nutridal are organoleptic characteristics of the nutridal etcetera are similar to those of the natural dal. So, this is all about the nutridal. I will come to the other product that is the fortified noodles. Okay. You know the noodles are safe and nutritious product that conform to the set food standards of various countries. With the increase in Asia Pacific economy, the demand for quality noodle products among consumers is increasing day by day. Since ancient times, noodles in various formulations and shapes have been used as staple food in many parts of the Asia, in many Asian countries. Even now, it has become popular in other countries, European countries or other countries as well. Noodles may either be served by frying and mixing with the vegetables and meats or they can be served as a soup noodle by boiling in a broth. So, noodles are classified into different types on the basis of the raw material, processing methods, salt composition, size of the noodle, strand and form of the noodles in the marketplace etcetera. So, on the various like for example, on the basis of their origin the noodles are classified like Chinese noodle, Japanese noodle, Korean, Italian, Thai noodle etcetera. On the basis of their color they are classified as white or yellow noodles. On the basis of flour whether they are wheat flour is used for their manufacture or rice flour accordingly rice noodles or wheat noodles or on the basis of the form of the product in the marketplace like instant noodle, boiled noodles, steamed, frozen boiled, instant cup and so on. So, rice noodle is, is very very important product, commercially important and nutritionally important product. It is the most consumed form of rice product next to cooked rice grain in Asia that is after the if you see the survey. So, rice noodle is the next important product uh, which is consumed by the people after the rice natural normal rice. So, rice noodles are commonly prepared by two methods one is the seating of dough to develop flat noodles or extruding to develop vermicelli like product or vermicelli. So, the ingredients for the preparation of the uh, rice noodle raw materials for rice noodles include rice flour that is the rice varieties containing high amylose concentration 
high gel consistency and low gelatinization temperature are appropriate for making rice noodles. Intermediate amylose content produces soft noodles which lead to the high solid losses during cooking. Low amylose noodles lead to a very poor texture. Water content, its optimum water content for preparation of rice noodle is generally to the range of 30 to 35 percent. So, this water when it is used in the prepares the dough, it hydrates the flour for making dough of proper consistency, but this water content should be optimized. It should not be more, it should not be less because more water content or excess water results in a soggy dough, while too little water creates difficulty in dough formation and seating. So, water acts a medium for accomplishing the biochemical and physicochemical reactions in transforming the raw component present in the rice into a finished noodle form or compacted form. The other component ingredient include salt, oil and some improvers and preservatives. Salt maybe to the tune of 1 to 3 percent on the floor weight basis. It is used for tightening and strengthening the dough. It has inhibitory effect on proteolytic enzymes. It enhances seating properties of the dough and improves the texture and flavor. Oil which is normally 20 percent of the noodle weight is added generally used to fry the instant noodle. It influences the flavor and color of the noodle. The improvers may be 0.1 to 0.05 percent on the floor weight and they include hydrocolloids and polyphosphates etcetera which are used to improve the overall quality of the noodle like gums like guar gum or so they are added to enhance water absorption properties and texture. In fact, use of polyphosphate increases the gelatinization of starch and water retention ability during cooking. Preservatives sometimes antioxidants such as BHA, TBHQ, BHT and propyl gallates etcetera are added to avoid because this oil has been added to avoid the rancidity of the oil oxidative rancidity these antioxidants or other such other preservatives are added. Then this is the method of rice preparation and fortification of the rice noodle. So, here also we have the use the like iron fortified rice so, same concept is used here also we are taking broken rice this broken rice is converted into flour and it is added with. So, the same step like up to conditioning step that is the rice flour and then uh, this uh, a micronutrient premix they are mixed conditioned with appropriate quantity of moisture are added conditions and then this conditioned this uh, uh, wheat flour or conditioned flour after mixing and conditioning that is it is put to the extruder. So, in the extruder we have a specific design die that is which gives the material in the strip form or in the thread form. So, the noodles are obtained, then the added moisture it can be dried and you get fortified rice noodle. You can see in the here in the photograph it is the noodle that has been prepared in our laboratory. So, regarding fortification level, we have used the same fortification level which is recommended by FSSAI for rice like micronutrient iron, folic acid and vitamin B12, same micronutrient and same label we are. So, it is in fact iron, folic acid and vitamin B 12 fortified rice noodle and which may be a very good product as far as the prevention or eradication of iron deficiency anemia is concerned. Then the unit operations I have already uh, that is before it is converted into flour there are some unit operations that is the in the rice noodle manufacture may be grinding and sieving because the proper form proper size of this uh, is very important and it can be raw as well as flour or it can be wet dough. So, both rice raw rice or dry rice or soaked rice they can be ground 
when the appropriate moisture content is achieved. So, the grinding may be wet grinding or dry grinding. Wet grinding use of a wheeler grinder with provision to add water. Here, this it produces a rice slurry with a smooth consistency. Whereas, the dry grinding produces that is the floor, rice floor of a proper particle size may be 60 or 80 mesh sizes. Then after this uh, grinding either in the uh, slurry farm or in the floor farm, the next step is molding. The molding in cutting and then extrusion it can be uh, by appropriate seating and uh, cutting or it can be passed through the extruder and you can obtain. So, the cutting the noodles in rectangular shape 1 to 3 mm thick seeds are prepared and then they are fully steamed and steam seeds are then cut into noodles. Whereas, using extrusion the noodles of varying shapes is a type and round shape noodles can be obtained. It is the continuous process continuous feeding, heating and molding is done simultaneously in through the extruder inside the extruder barrel and size and shape can be adjusted as per the need. Then after the material comes out of either this molding and drying cutting the, the next step is dehydration and dehydration obviously to it is to make the product room temperature stable because earlier you have seen that is about 30 35 percent moisture has been added. So, this uh, moisture should be reduced right the as, as like it is about 15 25 percent of the moisture it should be lower than 15 to 25 percent, but this trying again it is little uh, that uh, technical that is it should be done with care because too fast a drying may result into curling and development of cracks etcetera. Too low uh, drying may result uh, that is some uh, mold infection or some souring etcetera of the product. So, the drying should be done with care. So, dehydration of noodles is may be done in two types right like one in the using a continuous drying cabinets where steam is used for heat exchange and heat is exchange between the heated steam and air in the cabinet to achieve satisfactory quality rice noodles should be turned over manually one or two times during the drying process or the other method or facility can be used that is a sort of room where the uh, proper conditions required for the drying can be maintained inside the room that is a temperature and moisture gradient is used to treat noodles throughout the drying process. And although drying at this low temperature less than 50 degree Celsius takes longer time, but as I told you it produces a good quality rice because at a, normally the high temperature drying results it has some problems. So, low temperature drying is recommended for noodles etcetera. It results a, a good white color good with having the noodle having good transparency or of uniform size noodles are obtained with this. So, the other steps are heating or steaming or boiling. The purpose of this is to uh, completely gelatinize the starch in the rice to its uh, it is a state heating occurs in two steps steaming which is performed before molding followed by boiling and cooling involves uh, placing steamed or boiled rice noodle in cold water may be 0 to 10 degree Celsius water to rapidly decrease their temperature to 24 to 26 degree Celsius uh, and form a stronger gel. The cooling procedure facilitates noodle suppression and creates a smooth slippery noodle texture and it this step takes about 1.5 to 2.5 minutes. So, with this I have given you a, I hope you have got a good idea of these two products in this lecture Nutridal and fortified noodles. In earlier lecture you we talked about iron fortified rice. So, these are the if these products are prepared all right or these technologies are commercially exploited this have a vast potential of improving 
the nutrition status or health are providing nutrition and health security to the masses in the nations. Thank you very much.